what I'm going to do here is give you a quick overview of our plan related to the 2014 Level 2 crash course. This is the schedule that we'll follow and I'll quickly explain what it is that I expect from you and what it is that I will be doing. Our first lecture will cover ethics and quantitative methods and that lecture will be on 1st May at 1.30 p.m. GMT. All subsequent lectures will be at the same time, 1.30 p.m. GMT. You need to figure out what time that is for you. Now, before the lecture, you need to do these things. Review the material. So, I'm not specifying exactly how you need to review because different people have studied in different ways. Perhaps you've been listening to our videos, perhaps you have been studying from the curriculum or from some other study notes. But whatever it is that you've been doing, make sure you go over your notes and have a sense for the material. I also want you to practice these questions. If you've done them before, that's very good. Hopefully you have. But any issues that you have related to the examples in the curriculum, the practice problems in the curriculum, and also the practice problems on the CFA Institute website. If you haven't done these already, you must do them. Plus, you need to also do the questions from the past CFA Institute mock exam. And we've shared with you a relevancy document which describes which year is relevant for which topic. Quantitative methods, for example, is relevant from 2009 onwards. So do these questions. I hope many of you have done most of these questions already. And if you have any issues, you don't understand something, send that to us by 29th April. This is for ethics and quantitative methods. Even ethics in terms of mock exams is relevant from 2009 onwards. You will have to send your questions to the Google group, which is shown over here. What we will do then is review your questions, organize them, and then on the lecture date, we'll do two things. One is we will respond to your questions. And I cannot guarantee that I'll respond to every single question, but we will make every effort to organize the questions and make sure that a representative set of questions are covered and all the important points are covered. What we will also do, and this is where, this is how each class will start, we will give a summary of the main points. Let's take quantitative methods, for example. When we start a session on 1st May, I will go over the most important, most testable points from all the quantitative methods readings. Clearly, we cannot cover every single learning objective in the limited time that we have, but uh, from my experience, there are certain items that are particularly important and more likely to be tested, and it is essential that you understand those points. Now, this is not a guarantee that if you just do those points, you will pass on the exam, but what I can assure you is if you don't understand these points, you will not pass. So this, in a sense, is a litmus test of whether you know the most important material. Within 48 hours of our classroom session, a recording will be made available to you. In case you don't have any questions, that's not such a problem because hopefully others will and between the summary and the response to questions from others, you can still benefit from this. If you join the crash course late, that's also not an issue because you will have access to all the recordings from the past. What I'll now do is respond to a question that keeps coming up, which is how much is enough? How much studies is enough? How much practice is enough? So I'm going to explain this through a graph. Let's say that on the y-axis, we have the probability of passing. And on the x-axis, you have the amount of studies that you need to do. If you simply read the curriculum or read some notes or listen to our videos and don't do any practice, that, let's say, is represented by this area. So I'll call it review. If you just do that, I'd say that the probability of passing is approximately 20%. So let's say that we are like this. 
when as you start practicing that's where your probability of passing keeps increasing the most important thing to practice after your review is the practice problems in the curriculum so that will seriously or significantly improve your chances of passing then the next best thing to do is examples from the curriculum and you will notice that there are two categories of examples they are examples which are relatively short questions some of them are case study format those are particularly important and then there are other long winded examples that are more illustrative with those examples i say that if you have time then do them but in the last few weeks it might make more sense to just skip them and focus on this on the examples and the practice exams there are several sources of practice exams one source is past cfa institute mock exams so if you do those that will help you a lot but keep in mind that when you do these practice exams from the past these are past past mock exams not all the content is relevant so you should check our website where we have published the relevance of questions from the past mock exam and then you can keep going various prep providers share mock exams and the more you do the better but coming back to this question of how much is enough as you keep practicing i'd say if you've done all these things that i have mentioned then your probability of passing is pretty high it's 90% to 95% and as you keep practicing more then there is diminishing returns the more you do the higher the probability of passing but there is never a guarantee so bottom line is you do as much as you can but keep in mind that certain things will give you a greater bang for the buck than other things so make sure you do all these another thing i recommend is that in the last couple of weeks you should take some days out where you do the full 6 hour exam now one of those 6 hour exams definitely should be the 2014 cfa institute mock exam which this year is online so you need to be in front of your computer for 6 hours doing that exam in addition in many parts of the world the local society works with schweizer and does a full mock exam i would strongly recommend that you do that exam that prepares you well for the actual exam and in addition if from your favorite prep provider you can get a full length practice exam or multiple practice exams i say that you do those the more you do the better so that is it for now